Thank you so much, Sally Ann, for that warm introduction. Uh, my name is Rob Yearsley. I am a deep tech entrepreneur uh, and a technologist. I've been in this game for quite a while, uh, and there's a good reason. I believe that this is one of the very few vocations out there or a calling that can really just effectively change the world at scale. I'm a slightly jaded, but you know, optimistic Gen X kind of guy. I grew up, my heroes were Steve Jobs and Steve Bosniak, guys who literally changed the face of the world through technology. And I was probably about 15 to 16 while that was happening with the Mac, and you know, that inspired me to become a technologist and entrepreneur. I thought, wow, if those guys can do it, maybe I could do something like that as well. So I'm here today speaking to you about my life's work, uh, a calling I found almost by accident that is having a profound impact to quite an interesting group of people. But the frame of reference we're talking about is the built environment. And this is a bit of a tricky one. So I'm going to take a slightly tangential approach, not diesel generators or planes, uh, but something a bit closer to what Genevieve Bell was talking about, about cybernetics, how we perceive the world around us. And I believe we're heading for an incredible inflection point. Uh, and I'm talking about a convergence between something that's been banded about for a while now, augmented reality, and something that is getting very hot, artificial intelligence. So, what does this look like? Well, I don't think it actually looks like very much at all, in my opinion. I think it sounds like a different future. So, I'm talking about augmented reality. Uh, for people who know what I'm talking about, we're developing an AR glass device. Uh, and I might just give a little bit of history about AR. Now, we have this expectation there's going to be a visual overlay and there's going to be flings, things floating around in front of us, and that all sounds nice. But we've recently had the experience of VR and Metaverse and a bit fizz. Oh, no, it's not so great. AR is a different animal. And I'm particularly interested in AR because not only we're thinking about doing computing spatially, the space around us, it's also about being in the moment. Okay. So this is a completely new form of computer where for the last 20 years, well, sorry, 15 years, we've got used to running little apps on our phone, doing things down here, that the Pokemon in Tokyo that Genevieve was talking about, that's going to move on. That's going to get different. But it isn't so much that the fact that the display, that our canvas of the world becomes the display, it's that the computing comes with us in the moment. Okay? And this, I think, is going to be the moment for artificial intelligence. Because if there is a shared experience between the human and the machine, something profound can actually happen. And I love coining terms. Genevieve was talking about cybernetics. I think there's going to be a moment around artificial intelligence and human symbiosis. And I think it's going to happen a lot sooner than we expect. Slightly scary, but actually quite profound. And the reason I have an inkling about this is because we're working on it about two kilometers from here. So, I wanted to give you guys a bit of a sneak peek about RE today. I kind of hinted at this a little earlier. Um, yeah, here it is. Not kind of what most people were expecting. It just looks like a pair of Ray-Bans. Actually, that's quite intentional. So, what is interesting about new technologies is they need to kill app. And what we should have learned from the metaverse is, and the ski goggles from Apple, in recent times is that you need to be solving a clear problem. And I've been in this game, particularly the AR, AI game, for about a decade. And what really troubled me was there was no clear killer app, no clear use case for this technology. So much incredible possibility, but always nascent, always just a bit over the horizon. And one of the key issues was going to be the screen. Okay. And that's a problem, because screen technology, you know, it's always five years away, battery life issues. So I thought, you know, what if we just get rid of the damn screen? What are we left with? We get to the nut of the problem. We get to having a computer experiencing what we experience because the issues around battery life, bulk, and all that stuff goes away. That made ARIA possible. And I wish I had another 20 minutes, so 
I'm just going to skip through a few very key themes. So what we've arrived at with this augmented reality artificial intelligence system is the possibility to engender and enable life-changing independence for a very, very, very large cohort of people. And I just want to show you, this is the first time ARIA was used as a proof of concept almost four years ago. This little video, this is Marx Valencio, who is completely blind. He took a bullet through both optic nerves through a drive-by shooting. He has no vision. Watch this. So visual to auditory spatial perception with no sight. So this is real life changing stuff. Here's a little picture of an animation of some of the tech that's inside. And I'm, I'm sitting here because John and Viv go, don't turn on the tech, don't turn on the tech, show them what it's about. But this is worth noting because this goes to the ecosystem issue and opportunity in Australia. We need complex ecosystem in technology, in research, in manufacturing. If we don't attempt to do something complex, we're never going to get there. And this is what it unlocks. 338 million, million people today living with blindness and vision impairment. It's going to be over half a billion people by 2050. That's some context. We're talking about a market worth close to $200 billion with no workable solution. Hell of an opportunity. And this was only possible because we reframed the problem from saying this is a medical issue, we need to work out implantable technology, to saying, you know, maybe we could actually do this with consumer electronics. It took a tangential approach, and that was possible because we went and talked to the people who are actually experiencing this. Daniel Kishev had heard of him. He's probably the second most blind, famous blind person here alive. And he said to this to me, Rob, blindness is an information access problem. If you give me the information, my disability goes away. And this is a guy who literally sees through sound, through echolocation. And I th that was the big insight that got us underway. So in closing, I want to talk about the ecosystem again. So this is a major technology project. Our plan is to actually design, manufacture, then export from Australia. This is crazy stuff because the level of sophistication, the complexity is on par with a, you know, building a smartphone. Anyone heard of Australian smartphone? No? Okay. <laughs> so you can imagine the ecosystem, the supporting technologies, the infrastructure required to get there. That's our challenge. And my ask to the people in this room is we can do this together. We need help. ARIA won't happen in Australia without it. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Robert, thank you so much.